Acts 27 And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustans band. So this centurion, he was normally in charge of about 80 soldiers and I'm sure that he took other soldiers with him on this uh, journey because it's a long journey all the way up to Rome. And they set off from uh, Caesarea and went to Rome. And uh, Paul was there, I suppose he was captive, but he also was amongst other prisoners. So there's quite many people on this ship and they set off on their journey. In verse 7 it says, And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarcely were come over against Sindus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, over against Solomon, and hardly passing it, we came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, which is where, which whereunto was the city of Lycia. See, they went under Crete to kind of uh, help them to be buffeted from the winds, and but they were still struggling to get past that way. And in verse nine, now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was not now already passed uh, so the fast was the day of atonement so it was really sort of uh, mid-september october which is when you know it was the end of the sailing period and they were just right on the boundary of coming into a no sailing zone and the wind was really strong for them but it says that paul admonished them and said unto them sirs i perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage not only of the lading and ships, but also our life. So he was saying, look, we're going to lose all of the stuff that's on the ship, probably lose the ship ourselves, and some of us may even die. So he's really saying to him, look, we ought to bed down. But the problem is, is that if you bed down, you know, they've got to stay there for some time, and it may actually become the end of the sailing season, and therefore they'll be stuck on Crete. And the Roman centurion, you know, politically, He's got to kind of carry out his orders, so he's really got to push forward as much as possible. And it says in verse 20, after some time, it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. You see, they sailed for some quiet time, and um, unfortunately the it just seemed like the storm continued and no doubt they were off course didn't really know where they were going and they got to a point where they realized that actually this is the end you know they're all going to die they already took off a load of stuff provisions that were on the boat to try and lighten it somewhat but it looks like that they just lost complete hope and uh, Paul you know he warns them and in verse 21 but after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said sirs ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me, howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. So they had no hope. And now Paul was standing in the midst of them and saying, you know, <laughs> you can imagine the storms like continuing on and everyone's lost hope. And he's saying, you know, be of good cheer because an angel of the God that I served appeared to me and gave me this good news that you will not lose your lives. And but we must be thrown onto some island. So he gave them hope in which to uh, continue on with. And at the point when they felt that there was no hope, really that's the only thing that they could cling on to. So they clinged on to our God. And it says in verse 35, And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. 
Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And when we were in all in the ship two hundred free scorn and sixteen souls, and when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. So there's four hundred and sixteen of them in this storm, and they're of good cheer because they have this hope. And I have no doubt that gospel was yet again proclaimed that Jesus died for their sins and that they can be set free from that free believing in his sacrifice on the cross and that he rose again to give them hope so that they can experience new life and be resurrected themselves and go to heaven so he gave them hope in a real poor situation and that's the hope that we can give to people today regardless of how down they are they can be reconciled back to God and find that relationship once more no doubt this is what they happened here and they were relying on Paul's word and there was no other hope and I think that the centurion did this by his actions as well so there was no turning back because they also cast over the wheat over the side there was now no provisions they had nothing they lightened the ship as much as possible and it says in verse 36 and when it was day they knew not the land but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded if were possible to thrust in the ship and when they had taken up the anchors they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore and falling into a place where two seas met they ran the ship aground and for part struck fast and remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves so they got out you know the ship was broken in two uh, but they managed to get out and all land safely on this island just as Paul said it was so in some respects you know Paul here I don't think he was being prophetic because he had uh, the angel of the Lord come to him although Paul did exercise prophecy in his life but he gave them hope and the message that was sent by the angel was fulfilled and no doubt I'm sure that many people that day were saved thank you God bless